Hey everyone, so it has been a whole year since I started this channel, More Hannah, my second channel, my lifestyle channel, whatever we want to call it. And so I thought I would do a video kind of like reflecting on the last year. Was this a good decision <laughs> that I made? Why did I make it in the first place? How has it gone and stuff? I asked on Instagram what you would like to know and I was actually quite surprised by how many responses there were because I don't know, I just didn't think that people would want to nerd out about this with me, but then I guess a lot of you have been watching this second channel and this is kind of the place where we nerd out about things like that, so I shouldn't have been surprised, but thank you for your responses. So before I get into your questions, let's just cover some groundwork in case you're like, hang on a second, what, this is your second channel? Like, you have two channels, like, what's going on? I have no idea what's happening. So I've been on YouTube for almost 10 years and my main channel, my first channel is called Hannah Witten, which is just my name. And that is where I make sex and relationships kind of content. And then this, my second channel is where I make lifestyle and culture content. But basically my main channel used to be the place where I put everything. So it would be this mix of sex and relationships and also lifestyle and culture content. And I basically just separated the two in order to compartmentalize in my head, make the making of videos and like the behind the scenes process much easier for me just to understand in my head. And then also in terms of what other people see and what I put out there, it's very clear that my main channel is about sex and relationships. Whereas a year ago, if you went to that channel, and I told you I was a sex and relationships YouTuber, you'd go to that channel and you'd be like, is she? Because of the huge mix of different types of content on that channel, and usually people subscribe for like a certain kind of thing, there would be some videos that did really well and others that would do really badly, and then there'd be some videos that I just wouldn't make at all because I thought it wouldn't fit on that channel or I knew that it wouldn't perform as well. So the other reason why I started this channel was a place to kind of like put all of those videos that never got made or did get made and just performed really badly. So that's the backstory and now I'm just gonna answer some of your questions and see what you wanna know. And we shall reflect and see how this year has gone. Do people new to your content discover it through your first or second channel more? I don't know. That would be something for you to tell me if you discovered me one way or another, but my educated guess is probably more discovery on the main channel because that tends to reach more non-subscribers just in terms of like the data and the analytics that you get. Whereas this channel is more like the videos get viewed by subscribers. But I definitely have seen an odd comment here or there from people saying that they found this channel first. Did it frustrate you posting to a smaller channel when you knew that a video would do better on your other one? Really no, no frustration at all. If anything, like this sense of relief, like I don't care and it's all relative. So if I did post a video on the main channel, yes, overall, it might have gotten more views than if I posted it here. But in comparison to other videos on that channel, it probably would have tanked, whereas it would have done like average over here. So yeah, no, not frustrated at all. If anything, freed. Time and content management. This is what we're all here for, isn't it? The organization. So if you didn't know, I actually work with an editor. So I no longer edit all of my videos. Somebody else does all of that. So that takes a huge amount of work off my plate. So I'm able to do the other things and do the bits that I focus on because editing is very time consuming. In terms of my personal time management, I try and bulk film as much as possible, but that has kind of changed a lot during COVID. I'm filming a bit more just kind of like here and there. I don't have the same levels of energy <laughs> as I used to. It's just kind of depleted a lot. I think maybe because I'm an extrovert and I tend to kind of get my energy from other people and that hasn't really been happening. And then the other thing with COVID is that I'm a lot more restricted in terms of when I can film because my partner now works from home most of the time, but he has to go into the office twice a week. So those two days that he is in the office, I'm like, okay, those are the only days I have to record videos. Those are the only days I have to record podcast episodes and I kind of have to get all of my my content creation work that requires privacy done 
on those days. So that's one adjustment I've had to make in terms of like my time management. And then in terms of content management, I use this free tool called Asana, which is a project management tool. And basically me and my editor and my assistant all have access to this like big board of video ideas. And it's where we see like the progress of different videos and like the subtasks and like what needs to get done. and you can also have a calendar view of it all so you can see what videos are coming out when. My main channel videos are in red and then this channel videos are in blue. So on the calendar, I can clearly see like which channel videos are which and that is very useful. Have you noticed a difference between the audiences who follow each channel? I imagine age and countries is kind of similar. The only main difference would be in gender. I think there's a lot more men who watch my sex and relationships channel than this channel, but I have also had some viral videos on the other channel that have been mostly viewed by men and they still rack up views every month. So even if the men like aren't subscribed or aren't engaging with my newest videos, my overall channel analytics says that my audience is like, very male. But if you look at individual videos, then actually it is quite similar between the two channels. How's the AdSense going? Yes, let's talk monetization. So I managed to get this channel monetized fairly early. And obviously that's because I had this pre-existing audience. A lot of people were ready to kind of like come over and like see what content I was making here. The AdSense on this channel, isn't huge. I think my CPM is maybe ever so slightly higher on this channel, but it also really depends per video. In terms of AdSense, my main channel still makes more money, but that's just because there's this huge backlog of content on that channel that still, you know, gets views and ads play on and videos do tend to get more views over there as well. Like this is a much smaller channel. But here is one of the reasons why I just generally ignore AdSense when it comes to my income and I focus much more heavily on things like Patreon or working with brands or affiliates is because the amount of money that I earn across both channels for AdSense does not cover how much I pay my editor every month. So if we don't take into account Patreon or brand deals, my YouTube channels make a loss. But for me, having an editor is like a huge bonus. I can't edit as well as my editor does. So the videos are better. And then also it frees up my time to do a lot of other things like the podcast. So I definitely see it as an investment. And then I just like focus on trying to make more money in the other places. <laughs> How do you stay motivated and keep coming up with ideas? So on the motivated thing, I'm not always motivated. It ebbs and flows, it comes and goes. I think because I plan so far ahead with my content, I usually find myself sitting down on a day where I am kind of like motivated and like sparked with lots of ideas. And that's when I kind of sit down and plan like the next month's content on both channels. And then when it comes down to actually making the content, because I've got like the actual like process in place and I like know what I'm doing, I don't actually have to find the motivation each day. I'm basically just kind of like following this path that I've already laid down for myself. So past Hannah like makes that much easier. And then the ideas thing, it is just this like constant thing of like, I don't know, just coming up with ideas from conversations or things that I've watched or things that I've read or shower thoughts or like late night drowsy, like trying to fall asleep thoughts. And then they just go into Asana in the video ideas section. And when I sit down and I'm like planning content, that's when I kind of like look through those lists and like see like, oh, we could do that or that one. Sometimes I have a new idea and then that's like the next video because I'm like, this cannot wait. We have to do this one. Other times there have been video ideas sat on that list for years and maybe they'll never get made because they're not a good idea. <laughs> and that's why they're just sat there. Have you ever uploaded a video to the wrong channel by mistake? Yes. But because I upload all of my videos unlisted, I managed to catch it before it went live and just deleted it and re-uploaded it to the other channel. Are you really not caring that much about the views or is it still stressful business-wise? So I think this question is because I said that I didn't wanna care about the analytics on this channel and that is definitely 
still the case. I feel just like a lot more freed by just like letting this channel do its thing and not really over analyzing it. But I will say that I'm still pretty regimental about uploading on this channel every week, but that's not because I'm afraid of this channel not growing or not performing if I take a break for too long. It genuinely is because if I take a break or if I don't have a fixed schedule, it will not get done. I'm not the type of person where it's easy to kind of like, oh, when the whimsy takes me, I will film a video. I actually find myself motivated and I enjoy the creative process and I find myself being a lot more creatively engaged if I have a schedule if I have a deadline. And then also when working with a team, you've got other people who, you know, have a life of their own and also require deadlines rather than, you know, if my editor's like, when's the next video gonna be? I need to like schedule in my work days. I'm like, I'm not sure when I feel like it. Like that wouldn't work when you work with other people. So in terms of the behind the scenes, it makes the process so much easier by having like this strict schedule. Whereas on the other channel, obviously the same still applies, the behind the scenes and strict schedule really works, but there is this other motivating factor to that, which is like, it must perform, it must grow. Stress, 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 analytics. Whereas the only stress I have for this channel is hitting those deadlines, but then not actually worrying about how the video performs after it's gone live. Do you ever make a second channel video that you wish you could put on your main channel to get more views? No, mainly because of the relative thing. Like even if it will get more views overall on the main channel relative to other videos on that channel, it might do a bit shit. The only video that I think might be an exception to that is my wedding dress video, which I put on this channel. And rightly so, I don't think it would have fit on the other channel. It was very much like lifestyle, like content about fashion, but it did so well. And I guess I just wasn't expecting that, but maybe I shouldn't be surprised because people love talking about wedding dresses. Hot topic, maybe. But yeah, I have put some wedding content on the main channel, but that was more about discussing relationships. So that's why it felt like it fit there. And then like discussing the clothes, felt like it fit here. But that video actually got more views than the main channel video that went out that week, which was about sex drive, which I was a bit good about actually, because I was really proud of that sex drive video. But don't get me wrong, the sex drive video did do well on that channel, just people love a good wedding dress video. <laughs> How do you know when it's time for a mental health or a physical health break from the grind? I think if you're asking that question, you might need to take a break or follow where that question leads you or like, why is that question coming up? One thing that I like to do is if I feel like I'm having a lot of these like nagging feelings about taking a break, I actually like write it down and I write, the date that I was just like, oh, I really need a break. I write what triggered it. I write how I felt. And I also write like what happened. Like were there any action steps that I took? So I can start to notice a bit of a pattern of like what exhausts me, like what makes me like feel down, what makes me feel stressed. So yeah, if you are asking yourself that question, that might be a good sign that you need a break. I am not perfect at this though by any any means. These next two questions are quite similar, but I thought they were both really interesting, so I'm gonna lump them together. Finance aside, if you could only keep one channel, which would it be? And do you think that you will have the More Hannah channel forever? So my answer to this question depends on one big thing, and that's like what I'm doing for my career. So if I am still a digital content creator, a sex educator, then if I had to pick a channel, I would obviously pick the other one because that's where I do that work. And that's, you know, where that content lives and that would help me like further my career as a sex educator and, you know, keep making that content for people. However, if in a shocking turn of events, I just kind of like have sacked it in, not sacked sex education in, but the digital content creation side of things. And I had to pick a channel. I think I would pick this one. Like if I had a career that was hopefully still in sex education, but offline, then this would actually be the channel that I think I would keep because I would just like to still maybe have some like YouTube creative video 
outlet thing, but I wouldn't be needing to do the sex ed content because my actual career would be offline. Do you have a different filming mindset for Hannah Witten and more Hannah? The only thing I can think of is that I don't really swear as much on this channel. It sometimes comes up by actually trying and actively avoid sexual topics on this channel, but that's about it really. I don't even know if that's a different mindset because it's all just still my mind. Has your workload actually doubled or do you find it's more complex than that? I think it's a little bit more complex than that because previously I was uploading once or twice a week on the main channel. So I still had a bit of a habit or a bit of experience in making two videos a week. And the other way it's a bit more complex is because a lot of the tasks are bulked. So bulk filming, bulk sitting down and like coming up with video ideas for both channels. So the lines are just a lot more blurred. But I do think that the workload did significantly increase. So this is the question that we all want the answer to. The percentage of videos monetized on this channel compared to the other channel. We would be here forever if I tried to like go through every single video. So we're just gonna do the last 10 videos on each channel. Also, when I say demonetized, what that means is that the video has been deemed not suitable for most advertisers. So they'll be limited to no ads on it. That's the language that YouTube uses. So if a video is demonetized, you might still see adverts on it, but they're adverts from brands that are less fussy about where their ads are placed. So on More Hannah, out of the last 10 recent videos, nine of them are monetized. The one that isn't, I actually demonetized myself because it's the dance choreography video, so there's copyrighted music in that. Across this entire channel, there is one video that YouTube has demonetized. And it's my favorite books of 2019. And I don't know why, I'll have to go back and watch it. I'm not, I'm not sure why. But on my sex and relationships channel, it is a very different story. So out of the last 10 videos, four are monetized, six are demonetized. So there you go. That's <laughs> the general gist. This is also 10 from obviously my time when I'm looking at this, it might be different. There'll be other videos that have been uploaded by the time you're watching this. And then finally, are you still happy with the decision? Yes, very much so. I just really enjoy it for like, compartmentalizing my content for like what other people see. This is a sex and relationships channel. This is my lifestyle and culture channel. Like that just makes a lot of sense to me. And then also just like the freedom that that gives me in the behind the scenes in terms of video ideas, creating stuff that maybe I wouldn't have created before, niching down and just being able to get a bit more specific on each channel. I actually will be interested to see how things maybe change in the coming months when the pandemic is over and I'm like out and about and a bit more and doing a bit more work out of the house, which I used to be doing and how that will then like factor into my scheduling and stuff. But for now, we just at home, we chill. Right now, my main job is to basically do the content planning for the rest of 2020, just like getting all of those videos scheduled in the calendar, including Vlognica, which if you don't know what Vlognica is, I do eight videos over the eight days of Hanukkah on this channel. And yeah, so I need to come up with like eight more videos as well for this one. So also let me know in the comments what you would like to see because boy, am I gonna need the extra video ideas at this time of year. Well, thank you for watching. Thank you for one year of more Hannah. I really appreciate the you like this channel and you like the kind of content that I make over here as well as the sex and relationships. Maybe this one is more your jam. Who knows? I hope you are doing well and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.